look at this right here small events big profits it's the I wanted to give a shout out to my mentor and client <laughs> Alex J Moscow Alex J Moscow my mentor and client I'm just showing you this here small events big profits he's one of the reasons why I really want to talk to you today what's up Eli what's going on my brother Eli's a brother who I have a great deal of respect for and who I've, I get to learn from and the people that I like to learn from I learn just by spending time with them I've developed this weird sixth sense Mr. Eli, I hope you're still with me. I really want to give give you this. This is a big one for you as well, bro. Um, the people that I learn from, I spend time with them, and I literally integrate. I feel people now. I have this weird um, thing that's developed since uh, developing and deepening the overview method is an, 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 an incredible ability to feel. Uh, other people because I can completely feel myself right now and uh, it's a gift and I've been able to hang out with Eli and learn from him he is one of the top sales mentors uh, on the planet based on what he knows uh, my friend Alex J Moss he's now a friend Alex J Moscow is a, co a client and a mentor of mine he's the one that helped has helped me throughout this COVID pandemic uh, take my courses that have usually been live events and I was like oh fuck we have to cancel them and just by being in his circle and seeing and watching how he's pivoted and create really magical events virtually like first of all his live events are magic and then to have his virtual events be just as magical I've been able to download his unconscious into me and have been able to create some amazing live virtual events like amazing we have one coming up on Sunday the overview experience uh, people are this is I've been doing this for to support my clients it was just for my clients initially just wanted to support them through this COVID pandemic so that they didn't feel you know we double down in our uh, work in our everybody's panicking through the COVID pandemic everybody's like what the fuck do I do business is closing and everyone's in this fight or flight state we just said hey how can we double down on supporting our uh, community and we created these virtual workshops monthly for everybody to come and learn how to take their triggers and all of the shit that's accumulating and as your nervous system is building and building and building all of its dysregulation and all of the anger and all of the uh, whatever you're feeling the rage the fear and it's building you have two types of people those that know how to process it and adapt and pivot and level up and those that are just like sitting on their asses waiting for things to transform for example Eli was a man we got on a call and we were chatting about it and he's his managed to be able to take what you know he's had and then pivot and now offer something very valuable and train people how to train you know business people how to sell during COVID times like talk about an amazing pivot so you're either sitting on your butt hoping for mommy and daddy to rescue you or you're taking a proactive approach to looking around and seeing how you can serve other people we double down on it and as a result of that the overview experience is now a five-hour virtual retreat I was hoping like how I, I was I was really pissed because I was like how am I gonna get the same level of magic in a three-day live event how am I gonna replicate that on a on a zoom call and we did <laughs> because I doubled down on investing in my skills to to adapt I've said this before I'll say it again in times of change the learners shall inherit the earth while the learned will find themselves beautifully equipped for a world that does not exist. Let me say it again, because it's worth mentioning again. With all this COVID pandemic, with all this transition, in times, of, this is Eric Hoffer, and I don't know when he said this, but it was hundreds of years ago, maybe. I don't know how many years ago. He said, it's times of, in times of change, 
The learners shall inherit the earth, while the learned will find themselves beautifully equipped for a world that does not exist. And I wanted to step up and serve in a big way with my community, and then I opened it up to having people who aren't paying clients to come in and, and join in on it and make it affordable for them instead of flying in, paying thousands of dollars, up to two, three thousand dollars for hotel, all of that from the comfort of their home to get the same training, same community, same kind of personal attention if they had specific questions rather than just a Facebook Live or a YouTube video. You actually get some feedback if you wanted, if you had a question you wanted to share, you know, that's really powerful. And you can learn these tools, you can get started on them. And so we're doing it on Sunday. I'm just giving you a heads up today. Whoops, I fell, I almost fell. I wanted to talk about the two hidden gifts you're unconsciously uh, pushing away. Okay, it, it, and I want to teach you how to change that. There's two gifts that are really, that are so massive to your growth that will be huge for your transformation these two gifts that'll be huge for your like leveling up. And if we just learn how to master them, then we can absolutely transform. Then we can absolutely level ourselves up and have a diff different experience in our relationships. And those two things had to do with some of the client calls that I was on today. And these two things are guilt and resentment. The two hidden gifts. You're gonna think I'm a little bit weird. And I get it. Guilt and resentment. Guilt and resentment are gifts, are two hidden gifts you're unconsciously pushing away and how we can actually use them to our advantage. Okay. So this all happened because of three calls that I had today with clients, all men, which is uncommon. Usually my clients are 80, 20 women to men. But over the last three months, it's been 50-50 and there's so many more men recognizing, uh, they're following my content and they're saying, yeah, you know what, I wanna start showing up better for my woman. I wanna start, I wanna take off the mask. I, I wanna stop having to pretend and do things out of a, out of a, a need to be liked and in authenticity. I wanna learn how to manage my own anxiety. And so what I discovered, the common thread in all of these, um, these problems, these conflicts that they were going through was that they hadn't really worked through guilt and resentment. And personal development is usually used to get rid of those emotions, those negative emotions. And today, um, I was able to guide them both into themselves experiencing their guilt and resentment and actually feeling it. Feeling that guilt and resentment in their bodies. Feeling like, let me, let me put it to you this way. There was a, one, of, one of the gentlemen had a younger part of himself four years ago who felt really guilty that he destroyed a woman emotionally. Like they got into such a toxic relationship that they were just using one another and he was felt so guilty he was destroying he just destroyed her so when i first met him like a month and a half ago he was like yeah it's been four years since i've even been in a relationship and i'm like you don't see a problem with that have you dated he's like no not really i haven't i've kept women at a, at a, at a distance and i'm like oh you have an intimacy issue and it, what i would consider an intimacy disorder a lot of these diagnoses or challenges that happen like infidelity or you know like sex addiction and all that are simply just intimacy disorders in his case he broke up with a girl four years prior when he was early 20s and he had such tremendous guilt because he felt like he completely destroyed her he felt like he totally broke her heart and just destroyed her emotionally which I'm sure growing up, we've all experienced that growing up, either being on the receiving end of feeling emotionally destroyed because we had someone on such a pedestal and they did it didn't live up to our expectations, or we were the ones doing the destroying. <laughs> we were either destroyed or we were doing the destroying. We've all been through it. But a, there was a, a version of him four years prior where he actually was 
so guilt and guilt ridden and shamed for that experience. And when I got him to go back to that moment, he, he didn't want to do it. At first he was so resistant. He was like, I don't, I don't really want to go there. It hurts too much to see that version of myself and to feel him. And I was like, that is a form of self abandonment because the feeling of guilt is so powerful because he hurt someone in his perception. He didn't treat her really well. It was just about him. And he was just so guilty about that. And so what he realized was, was that he was doing at that moment the best he could and using sex as a form of connection when he, as a 21 year old male, didn't have any other way of, of showing a woman how important she was. He didn't really know. It was very transactional. So he was hating on himself so much unconsciously that he didn't realize it just hit him. He stopped dating girls because of the guilt. He stopped because he didn't want to ruin another one. He literally was crying tears and I was holding space and he was like, I don't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt anyone else. I don't want to break another woman. He was like crying tears. And this is very important for us men. Okay. You have to understand if we don't cry te our tears, our organs are going to weep. We're going to get anxiety. We're going to have health problems. We're going to want to commit suicide. This is why men have very high levels of suicide, I believe, is because they don't allow themselves to surrender to their tears or they're conditioned. We are conditioned to believe that our tears are not valid or welcome or our tears when expressed it with, with our women, like our mothers, were hushed were shunned, were, were, were stopped or suppressed because of the emotional unavailability of a man. Of course, dad will, will say, suck it up, young man, because he didn't know how to hold space for tears. And then mom wouldn't, you know, do it either. And there would just be, because mom didn't have access to her emotions, right? There was so much disconnection from self that it just became kind of the way. And so I got to I have probably the coolest job in the world. I, I get to guide people back to those abandoned parts of themselves. Like he abandoned himself in that moment and said, he's a horrible person. I'm a terrible guy. I, I, I don't deserve love. And so he stopped dating women. He stopped dating. It's been four years since he's had a, a partner. And I got to see him go back to that moment. And I got to see him feel the guilt. And because this is what he is avoiding. <clears throat> In order for him to heal and start healing his relationships and be able to make, make himself available to love again, he has to heal, give space for him to feel that guilt again, which is terrifying. We'll do everything to avoid the guilt, like avoid dating. I remember feeling that. I was like, fuck, I keep doing this. That's what happened to me. I was like, I don't want to get involved with another woman because I'm afraid of hurting her. In the last case that I had, and you know, I'm completely embarrassed to, to admit it, I fit, like, it got physical. It was, I, I, I couldn't deal with the guilt. I couldn't deal with the shame. I did everything I could in my mind, in my ability to deal with that guilt. How could I love myself if I've done that, if I've hurt someone so much? Let me know if you can relate to this. Let me know if you can relate to this. Have you ever been, hey, Jack, love you, brother. Have you ever been in a situation where you've done something where you perceive that it's completely unforgivable? Let me know if you say, say amen, okay, so that I know that I'm not alone here. I'm sharing my shame with you in a direct effort to help you understand that I know what it, it's like to try to struggle to love yourself when you feel so guilty. Let me know if you know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, amen. Yes. Mirror, mirror. 100% Jack, thank you for being here, standing with me with that. It's true. How can I? It got physical. It's basically the lowest of the low. I'm a piece of shit. Right. And here was here was the worst part. After it happened and the breakup happened, 
I had to figure out why. I was like, why did why does this cycle continue? Why did it happen? And how can I love myself if that happened? How is that even possible? So I did the wise fucking thing and I signed up and enrolled for this training called Conscious Relationship Training in Vancouver. Let me know if you've ever been to it. I got I gotta tell you, it's not something I recommend. It's not something I recommend if you're emotionally weak. <laughs> If you're emotionally, fra or actually uh, the opposite, I recommend it if you are emotionally fragile so you can go and get broken to pieces every fucking week. It's kind of like you have PTSD from the Iraq war and then you, in order to heal, they, the, the doctors tell you, all right, you get the fuck out of Iraq, go back to America and just rest for a while. And in your like one week of your healing, just as you're healing, you get deployed back to the very place that fucking terrorized you. I was doing that for 12 weeks. This is why I, I, I this is why I label the, the group trigger proof because I did some fucking badass shit after that happened. All right. After it happened where the relationship broke down, where things got to the point where I did unforgivable things, I then, I guess, punished myself. It was interesting. I did two things. I put my place up on my condo up an Airbnb and I moved in with my parents, the very source of all of my triggers throughout my life, number one. And number two, the next thing I did was I joined this conscious relationship training and I publicly declared what just happened to a group of women, white women, by the way, I got to say mostly white women. I have to say white women because Sorry, but white fragility is fucking real. Imagine white women who've had trauma. And then this face, this brown face who publicly admits what he did. Holy, like I don't recommend that to anyone. <laughs> I can laugh about it now and say it was so meaningful to stand there and have a gallery of women just fucking project all of their past traumas from their abusive relationships onto the onto their abusers and i had to embody that villain perspective and i was fucking taking it already wanting to kill myself because of guilt and shame but literally standing there having them say things and not feel anything because my wise mind dissociated from myself and went to another place so that i didn't have to feel the guilt and shame so I understand what it's like to not love yourself, to, to, to have done things that you think and perceive are completely unforgivable. Not only that, it's not like I had an army of people around me saying, oh, there, there, Nima, you know, you, you're innocent. You didn't know better. Yes, I had a core group of people who I wouldn't be surviving if it wasn't for them. But I had a public that was out to, I don't want to say out to get me. They were, per, their anger because of, their, their, you know, people found out about what happened. It became very public. And everybody, and, and it felt like it, I was perceiving like there was anger. Like I was getting angry text messages. And I was like, what the fuck? This is a, you know, both of us were committed to doing the work. And both of us were committed to taking full responsibility for our part of the dynamic but there were some really wounded, traumatized people who I got to be the face of all of their villainous acts from all of their past relationships. It was all on me. I got to be the, I got to be the sounding board for it. And I got to feel that shame and the pain and I actually sat with it and I stopped working. I stopped distracting myself by trying to help other people and I just went in. I just went inside. I went inside. Thank you, Jack. I love you, brother. I went inside and felt the shame, felt the pain. Oh, and here's what I realized. The guilt is a gift. Guilt is not something that I'm here to try to eliminate. It's something for me to actually feel. And right now I can honestly say that if it wasn't for the guilt of that version of me two years ago, I wouldn't have embodied this work and just dove in so not, I, I don't want to say fearlessly because I'd be lying if I said I was fearless. 
I would be fucking lying if I told you I was fearless. I was scared the whole way through. I thought I would never teach again. I thought nobody is, once they find out, nobody is ever going to want to even talk to me. And here's the other part. When, when, like, eventually, forget it. I don't want to, I don't want to be with anyone anymore. I won't, I don't want to hurt anyone. Right. So I'm going to stay away and not date anyone. That's why I can relate to my client. You know, I feel his pain. I got to stand there and feel his guilt with him while he felt the guilt of hurting his partner. And it's just, I totally get it, especially in an environment now where everybody's a victim and there's so much like, it's like, it's, it feels unsafe for us to kind of like the guilt and the shame, it becomes this cycle and it doesn't end. And the only way it ends is when we just, everybody just takes responsibility for their own part of healing and realize they're playing a victim. I was playing a victim. And so when I went and I saw myself, I could then start to piece together the journey that had me choosing a relationship out of fear, choosing a relationship that was transactional, choosing a relationship that wasn't really based on love because I didn't really know what love is because I didn't know what love felt like and I hadn't felt it for myself yet. I didn't know what it was like. So of course I would choose a relationship that was based purely on that sexual impulse, purely on transactional of what we could give one another because truthfully I was the same. She was seeing me as a meal ticket out of her previous lifestyle of, you know, she had a, a business that was kind of under the table uh, not above ground, and uh, a, an old past that was, prop, you know, unacceptable to my my kind of upbringing. So this was this beautiful, freaking toxic, unconscious uh, trauma bond between the two of us. That was, let's face it, they're they're the the spiciest relationships. They they make for a great time. So much drama up and down. Let me know if you've ever been in a situation like that, you know? So as soon as I saw that, I could see that younger part of me and why he chose what he did and make sense of it. Then I stopped being so hard on him. I stopped beating the shit out of himself and I appreciated and embraced and walked with the guilt. Instead of trying to eliminate the guilt, I walked with it and I saw how much more expansive that it made me, how much more empathetic that it made me. Because I started talking to people when, and I wasn't ready to come back to, to, to helping other people until I started getting around and talking to people and hearing their stories and going, and hearing how 95% of people are walking around with this gift of guilt and yet they're so burdened by it and they haven't yet learned how to alchemize it. And I'm like, well, shit, I can teach you. Let me show you what I'm doing. And slowly, two years ago, I've been building that up to the point now where I thought that soon as the, like, I'm never going to date again. No woman would ever take me. No, no woman would ever accept me for what I've done in the past. There's no way, you know, I've ch cheated. I've had many multiple, you know, girlfriends at the same time. I'm not the type to commit. I'm that bad boy type. Like there's no way, right? But lo and behold, I find uh, <laughs> vulnerability where lives will change and perhaps be even say stay strong. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate you being a witness to this, man. It means a lot. Jack, you played a rig, big role in my development too as a kind of like a mentor brother, big brother. Um, the journey then becomes to really, you know, start to embrace those parts of myself and walk with them and say, look, this guilty part of me, I, I, don't, I don't have to get rid of him. And I, back to what I was saying, I thought I would never meet somebody in it who would accept me that way. And then soon, at, check this out. So soon as I meet Diana, we go on a date after the, our third meeting. I was like, look, let, let, me take you out, let me take you out for lunch. And she goes, okay, that's fine. She takes, I go out to lunch and she knew I was a chiropractor. And I asked her, I said, so what do you do for work? And then this is what she says to me. She goes, oh, I help, uh, 
I help people who've had traumatic brain injury from intimate partner violence. I beg your pardon, what? She, she always laughs when we talk about this story. My face turned white. This brown guy completely turned white, what? And immediately the stories of, <laughs> Oh, she goes, I designed the programs. I was just, she was just correcting me, as wives do, as wives do. Um, she designs programs for, for people who are going through that. And I'm like, Ugh. <sighs> so I was like, in my head, I'm like, okay, I can't talk to her again. I'm never going to see her again. Like, I, ah, this has been real. So we, we leave, and I don't say anything. And a few days later, we see each other again. And then I said, all right, I got something to share. And I told her everything. I was extremely forthright. I was like, look, I'm done. I'm done judging myself. I'm on a healing journey. And I've been dealing with a lot of guilt and shame. And um, this is what's up. This is, this is what's happened. And, and she was just like, okay, thank you for sharing that. You know, and she shared her experience with it. And we started a dialogue and she totally had my back. And in this entire time when we've been together, thanks to that guilty little fucker a couple of years ago, every time we have an argument, every time my temper starts to go up, immediately that guy's with me and says, make sure you have, make sure she feels safe. Make sure she feels safe, number one. And I, absolutely know that I wouldn't be the person I am today if it wasn't for that guilty young man a couple of years ago. So that's how you overcome guilt, is not by overcoming it, not by trying to clear it, not by trying to make it your enemy. It's by actually walking with it, bringing it with you and saying, you're, part of the, you're the best part of me. I am a type of person now, I can look in a mirror now and say, for the first time in my life, despite everything I've done, that, you know what? Yeah, you, you've been an asshole. Sure. You've done some shit you regret, but I fucking love you. I think you're a lovable guy and you have a lot. And, and it's because of these challenges, that's why you have so much to offer to other people. It's because they don't, because they feel safe around you. They feel safe to be themselves around you. They don't have to hide around you. They can express their shadow around you. They feel that you get them. You're just as much of a deviant fuck as they are. Yes, I am. I'm just as deviant as you are. <laughs> Does this make sense? <laughs> Nama, I'm so grateful to be working with you. Nama just jumped into our program after doing the breath work on Sunday and was like, Let's do this. This is the level of vulnerability, Nama, that I'm helping guide you to do. And the way that we do that is by walking with our guilt, walking with our shame, not making it wrong and saying bad, bad, bad. Those aren't your voices. Those are external voices. We're here to change those voices inside to be self-affirming. How do you do that when you've just done something that you just feel like you're such a piece of shit? Well, what you do is you walk with that part of you and appreciate that the guilt is a gift. It's a gift that helps guide you into transformation. There is no transformation without guilt. Please write that down. There is no transformation without guilt. Now, when the guilt gets to the point where I can't move, now we got to work at it. But the first thing is to embrace it. That's gift number one. I wanted to leave you with gift number two, the hidden gift. Gift number one, hidden gift. Hopefully you got that guilt can be a gift if you're willing to learn how to dance with it. Let me know if you uh, concur, okay? Yes, that's, that's right, Carrie. The second gift that you might not be aware of that you're pushing away unconsciously is resentment, resentment. Resentment's a beautiful gift. Resentment is feedback. I want you to start looking at your anger and resentment not as something you have to try to get rid of. I used to say, and I say this true, it's true. Resentment is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die. Yes, true. Yeah, it's true because it'll, it'll eat away at you. But how to dissolve?
resolve resentment is to first embrace resentment for what it's actually giving you. It's holding a mirror for something that you're looking at or judging, mirror, mirror, as we say, as uh, Professor Sean uh, Dill taught us in uh, the BDC, uh, Jack, right? Mirror, mirror, what am I resenting? What's, what is it that you're resenting in the other person? Oh, fuck, I really resent people's entitlement. Oh my God, I just resent your entitlement. I hate, just wanna fucking, uh, when somebody's entitled, I get so resentful. What are you resentful for? Ah, oh, I'll hear the things like this. My father is a tyrant. My father is a tyrant. Okay, great. And they'll say, oh, my father's a tyrant. And no, there's resentment there. But I'm over it. I've done the work. No, you're not. By using that language, you are using violent communication, which indicates in your unconscious mind your resentment. Something for you to look at. Resentment's the gift. What's the gift? The gift is the thing that I resent in you the most, an opportunity for me to have a mirror. And we t talk about this, by the way, at the overview experience on Sunday. We're doing this. I'm going to show you how to do this. You'll walk through. You'll bring your resentment, and I'm going to walk you through how to clear this, how to internalize it and alchemize it into a gift. The resentment. Think of the trait that you resent in that other person. Okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Full of resentment, Michelle. Okay, so you take that thing that you're resentful for, number one, and then what you're going to do is you're going to ask the question, Okay, so what thing am I resenting? Oh, their entitlement. Okay, great. So here's what I do. Thank you to John Martini for teaching me this, by the way. Where do I display the same amount of entitlement? So what is it that you're resenting? What trait? Their selfishness, their greediness, their narcissism, their tyrant. Okay, good. Their abusiveness. Okay, good. Where do I display the same amount in my own unique special way? Where do I display it in my own unique special way? So go ahead and write that down. We're gonna get you, we're gonna get you to look at that. And then what happens is you're going to then use that resentment as a portal to dive in and look at the parts of you you're judging that are that way, that are entitled. It's like, I'm not entitled, I work hard for everything. Then I looked and I'm like, fuck, I was entitled. When I was ha doing the work on this, this resentment, because I was, it was building up. It was just, oh, it was like, it was taking up time and space in my mind, causing tension in my jaw. It was getting in the way and destroying my enjoyment of life. So I had to do the work on it. It was killing me. It's like I wasn't enjoying it. I discovered that I was entitled when it came to women. I was like, well, wait a second. I'm Dr. Nima. I'm entitled. I don't have to take care of her emotional needs. She got to take care of my emotional needs and physical needs. Why? Because I'm the man. I'm Dr. Nima. And so I was showing up entitled, whereas I was judging my chiropractic patients, for example, for feel, being entitled to having you know, insurance and all of that and just playing victim. And I was just really judging them. And I was just like, why is this pissing me off? It's something in you, Nima. No, it's not. Okay, fine. I'll do the, I'll look. Entitlement. Where are you entitled? No, I'm not entitled. Uh, and here's the fucking crazy part. The second that it hits you where you are entitled or wherever you are, it's got to hurt. This is how you know you're doing the work right. It's got to hurt. See, the truth will set you free, but first it will burn a hole in the soul. It will, it will piss you off. So when you're looking at it, you're looking and you see the truth of that. Oh my God, I'm just as entitled when it comes to women. Oh God. Oh. And then all of a sudden you start feeling guilt. And then you start to, you know, you start to feel blame. Then what happens is you start to do the work of integrating with that younger part of you that was entitled and integrating with that part of me that was completely detached from his emotions and using relationships and women as a, as a form of self-validation, not as a form of a safe space to connect. It was a, it was a tool 
relationships, women were tools for my self validation that I, because I didn't know how to give it to myself. And as soon as I see that entitlement, all of a sudden I have an understanding towards myself. I have empathy towards myself. Guess what happens to my resentment towards entitled people? I realize that I was entitled, I, I was being entitled because I didn't fully own my own power and I didn't fully love myself. Well, these people are feeling entitled because they yet haven't been awakened to their own power. All of a sudden I have empathy towards those that I resented. And guess what happened? The resentment that I felt towards those entitled assholes became a portal for me to go in, observe myself if I had the courage. That's the biggest obstacle. The biggest obstacle is my ego wanting to stay mad and not want to go inside because we want to project and blame outwards. Blame is projected pain outwards. The pain of, of, of feeling you know, the guilt of that entitlement, I just project it outwards. That's how everything's a mirror. That's projection in psychology. This is the physics behind it. I got to see it. You get to experience the physics of projection in the overview experience. It's really cool. So then what happened was the trigger of anger and resentment became a, like, a, like a little portal that I go in and then I can actually love and appreciate myself. So in a in times of change, the learners will inherit the earth while the learned will find themselves beautifully equipped for a world that does not exist, you know? And so, interestingly enough, the best skills for you to learn in this changing world is the ability to take your trigger, your resentment and guilt, and turn them into self-love. That, that's Then they become gifts. Not something to avoid or something to go to a shrink or, or a pill. That's what most anxiety, by the way. It's not anxiety. It's guilt and resentment disguised as anxiety so you don't have to actually feel those feelings. You'd rather feel anxious than to feel the resentment. I've seen it. If you just surrender to the resentment and feel it for a little while and learn how to dance with it, that's why I call it dancing with your dark passenger. You then drop in and you then heal a, a, like a, a, a disconnected part of yourself. Then resentment and guilt become gifts if you're willing to learn how to do it. I'm going to invite you. I know it's short notice, but I don't want you to be left out. If you feel called and what I'm saying is resonating with you, if you feel called and what I'm saying is resonating, I'm going to drop a... Um, link there in the comment section. I know, Margaret, you're coming. Um, consider joining us. It's five hours. You're going to be taken and taught how to take these two hidden gifts. I call them hidden because 99% of people would rather look away from them. We're getting you to look at them, and that takes some courage. So you, if you're not a badass, then don't bother signing up. You, you're, you don't have to be a badass, but you got to say, I'm, I'm on the, I'm on the path of becoming a badass. Badass meaning resilient. Badass having capacity. Instead of being so sensitive and avoiding things that are just challenging, we're asking you to join us because this is what our community is all about is we're diving head first into our triggers because the triggers are a portal. Anger is a portal. Resentment is a portal. Guilt is a portal that if you're willing to go in and feel the feelings and get uncomfortable and cry and be icky, which is not easy, but it's nice to have someone who, who's just as deviant as you are hold space for you while you express and puke those emotional into the emotional bucket and come out on the other side going, fuck, that felt, it's like you've had this vomit that you wanted to, bleh. It's like, oh, a relief. I feel seen and I feel not judged. <sighs> That's healing. Healing happens in community and this community is dedicated to that. And I just wanted to offer you that tonight before you go to bed. Just make a journal tonight. My guilt, my resentment is, the gift of my guilt is, the gift of my resentment has been. 
and just look and start to give yourself permission to ease in towards healing rather than avoiding because it's uncomfortable. You know, it's like a cold shower. You're going to go in and just ice bath. I mean, it's, it's practice. It's practice. It's healing. And your heart opens as a, as a result. If you're just willing to do it, my clients are, I tell people, it's not about feeling better. It's about getting better at feeling so that people can feel your heart. Can you feel my heart as I'm sharing this with you? Can you feel that this is not an, this wasn't scripted. I just had two things that I wanted to share, but it came through me and I sure as hell didn't wake up this morning thinking that I was going to share my shameful story from the past couple of years, but I felt that it was fitting in this moment. It was very fitting for you because I've been so busy talking to people who can't get over their guilt and can't get over their shame. And I want to tell you that I can see that. I can see you and I know what it was like. I remember looking in a mirror going, how the fuck am I supposed to love myself after I did that? Who would ever love me if they really knew? Who would ever love me? Nobody would. There's no way that I'm ever going to find a girlfriend, let alone get married. And so here I am with probably the most secure, conscious, attached relationship that I've ever had. Every day I'm like, you're a gift. You're a gift from God. I didn't think that this was possible. Um, you know, and she feels the same about me. And, you know, I don't, and it's not because I'm paying her for it. It's because she genuinely feels that, you know, it's not like, I'm just like, really, you love me? Like, am I that lovable? Yes, I had to finally believe that I am for somebody to mirror that to me. And now the universe is now bringing in the abundance towards me of love, of connection, of friendships I've never had before. And I know that it's because it's a direct reflection. The universe is reflecting back to me exactly the degree of love that I've been giving myself. So I'm going to encourage you, if you are called or resonating with what I'm telling you, don't even hesitate. Just create a sacred pause for yourself this weekend. It's um, on the West Coast. It's 12 to 5 on Sunday. Or on the East Coast of Canada or in the United States, it's 3 to 9. Or eight, three to eight. Yeah, three to eight. Sunday night. Sacred pause. You might feel the guilt. Oh no, my children. Oh, I feel guilty spending time away from my partner. Yeah, I know. You have to actually feel those things in order to sometimes create the space. You not creating the space for yourself is what's keeping you stuck in these perpetual cycles. You're waiting for that to go away. No, you got to feel it. Jump into the portal. Make yourself a priority. I would love to see you there. Hopefully, let me know what your greatest takeaway is in this, in this call. I would love to, to see this. I love you, Betty. You're awesome in transformation. I love you too, Jack. Big love to you. I'm giving you a big hug. So much love. I'll text you. Let's get on a call soon. We're long overdue. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Um, make sure you jump in, or if you have any questions, please, who you, whoever you know, I'm sure you're thinking of two or three people that really would benefit because they've been beating themselves up so much. Please invite them into this group and tag them on this training so that they can hear my story and know, and know that they're not alone in their guilt and shame and that that's not going anywhere and that's okay. You don't have to make it go anywhere. You can bring it along. Have it walk with you. Those parts of you deserve your love because you have gifts. And you're hiding these gifts from the world because you're believing those unworthiness stories from those past events. That's nonsense. Imagine if I bought into all of the stories that others are saying, still saying about me, and I kept believing them to the point where I silenced myself and you didn't get to hear this message and you didn't feel my heart and then you didn't see the results of my healing work. Imagine if I bought into my own story that I'm a piece of shit and, and I should never teach again. Imagine that. So I, I really strongly encourage you to look at yourself a little differently and see these two things, guilt and resentment, as gifts if you're willing to learn how to jump down that rabbit hole, follow the white rabbit, and dive in into the matrix of self-love and deeper connection. It's an honor to guide you. Let me know what you uh, got out of this, your biggest takeaway was, any feedback or any questions you have, I'll do another training. My commitment is to try and get in at least once a day in here, but in between lately, I have been having so many client calls. I'm now about to limit it to three a day um, because whew, 
it really, you know, holding space for people to have feelings. I bring myself into it, right? So I really need to get out and, you know, have some, create some space and free time. I'm doing a breathwork seminar tomorrow morning just to help clear my space, my container inside so that I can be there greater for my wife, my family, uh, and for you. Big love to you. See you at the next perfect time.